Okay, good morning everybody. Come take your seats, guys. Good to see you. We'll start in about a minute's time. Nice to welcome you all this morning. It looks like we're starting about 10 seconds time. This is good. This is good. That's because we've not got teas and coffees, isn't it? So we've not distracted in our conversations. Well, good morning to you. Welcome, folks. Lovely to see you. Um, for those who don't mo- know me, if we've got any visitors, my name's Matt. I'm one of the pastors here at the church, and we pray God's blessing on you. But you know, I pray God's blessing on all of us this morning um, as we come to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, the one who is Lord and King, the one we can trust, the one who loves us more than we even could ever comprehend or imagine, um, who knows how we're feeling this morning and who cares deeply and says, I'm the rock, you can trust me, lean hard on me, um, who would want to speak comfort to our hearts and would want to invite us this morning to worship the Father and to worship um, filled with the Spirit of God. So can I uh, invite you to stand for a moment, if you're able, please. I'm going to read some uh, words from Psalm 95. I'll speak a bit more after that. We'll have a time of sung worship together. I'll come back up and explain a few bits and bobs then. But let's just take a moment to turn our hearts to the Lord. In such an unusual and busy week with lots of changes, lots of things happening, an opportunity now just to pause and turn our hearts to the Lord. And if there are folks, so this morning we are streaming. If there are folks that are watching at home, we want to say hello to you. Um, And may God bless you too, not just the folks here. Um, And if you're at home, just turn your heart to the Lord for a moment. Just take a moment and stop and realize that you are deeply loved. Realize that God is good all the time. God is good. And realize that when we call on him, when we draw near to him, he draws near to us because that's what he longs for, for us to turn to him that he may draw close by his spirit. For the Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks, they belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. So Father, this morning, We turn our hearts to you. We turn the affections of our hearts to you. And we worship you in this place. We worship your son, Jesus, our savior and our Lord, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. And we invite you, come Holy Spirit. Come and touch all of us now who are gathered here, folks at home. Come Holy Spirit and allow us to pour out our worship in spirit and truth. To Jesus now. Amen. Amen. Let's worship together. Jesus. 
righteousness alone. For bless I stand before the throne. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak, very strong in the strength. They stood for a moment and say to yourself, if this is true for you, if you love Jesus, just say in your heart, in Christ alone, my hope is found. Cornerstone, safe, strong, through all storms. Jesus, we love you and we worship you this morning. We thank you for who you are and we thank you for your unstoppable love, your incredible grace and your presence with us now. Amen. Amen. Take a seat, folks. Well, we've got 32 people, at least it turns out, tuning in this morning. It's a bit different, isn't it? Via this thing here. And what's amazing is we uh, had that prayer meeting where I'm thinking, well, we're going to do this with the internet the other week. Do you remember? I'm thinking, what are we doing? Here you go. That's what it was. So now we can do this, which is great. We want to send our love to folks that are tuning in, um, folks that have decided it's best to stay back this morning. Totally understand that. We pray God's blessing on you um, and know that you're part of the family here. So I got something with me. Uh, mm, This is where I walk out of shop. Forgive me, folks at home. It's this, so you know, all right? You see that? I think they'll see that. I'm just going this way, right. Um, I've got some in here. This is very, very, very precious to me. Actually, I've got lots of these, I'll be honest. But anyone work out what this is? Anyone know what this is from Fresh Out? Yeah, Harry, what do you think it is? What is this? Comic. Comic, he's right. What particular type of comic is this? Put your hands up if you've ever read a Beano. Yes, this is amazing. I had no clue that most of the church would put their hands up. That's, I feel so at home now, I'll be honest. And that's my kids' talk done. Good night, right, that's lovely. Um, no, that's amazing. So, I used to love comics when I was a kid. But has anybody read anything other than the Beano? What magazines do people like when they were kids here? I'm interested, all generations, what we got? Dandy, Eagle, Lion, these sound cool. Where are they, Archie? Eagle and Lion, they sound amazing. Yeah. Say again. Mandy, is it just any name? We just come up, Mandy, Joan, Joyce. I love it. Mandy was a good one. Who? Girls Own, that sounds quite modern, Di. Do you still buy that one? That's, um, that's quite impressive. Anybody else read Girls Own? Yes, May's with you, yes, good, yes. Any, any others, right, one at a time. Just 17. Rachel, do you still read Just 17? <laughs> I think it's in the name. <laughs> it's a very particular niche market, that one. <laughs> no, I'm not saying anything. Uh, I'm saying I can't read it either. Um, yes? Look and learn, that's a bit, that sounds a little bit, you know studious. What do you think, Archie? Look and learn? Is that the kind of comic we want to... That's kind of the one your, your mum and dad would buy here, isn't it? And you'd be like, oh, where's the Beano? Yeah. Okay, what I love is um, we've just thought about that, that all of us have this lovely thing in common, apart from those who are sitting there, that comics. Comics. I, I read books, don't you know? Um, and, and yeah, 
I wish I did read more books as a kid, but I didn't. I, I loved comics. Um, and this one's brilliant. I mean, what, look what we've got in here. We've got Dennis the Menace on the front. We go in here, we've got Billy Wiz. He can run so fast. He's fantastic. Anyone know this one from a distance? Minnie the Minx. Yeah, getting up to all sorts. My favourite was Roger the Dodger. He was good. He was absolutely brilliant. I loved um, comics as a kid. And I've got a lovely, lovely memory in my head. When I was little, I went to Taunton Baptist Church just down the road in Taunton. And what was lovely is this elderly couple called Ruby and Les, and they were so, so lovely. Neither of them are with us anymore. They're both with the Lord. But they were so kind to me and so lovely that every week they'd have a little comic for me. And they, I think they got it out like the sun or something. They pulled it out of one of those papers, but it was like the, the children's bit. And I used to love this and go over and, you know, first things first, you nick as many biscuits as you can off the plates after the service, Right. And then second thing, go and get this comic from Ruby and Les. And they would hand it over. And it meant so much to me that I still remember now what it felt like to be loved and looked after by this elderly couple that I didn't know them very well, but they were kind to me. And what I want to remind you of this morning, and it seems particularly relevant, is that church isn't something you go to. Church, if... if if we have to stop services, which we might in a few weeks' time, who knows? I don't know. Um, I want to tell you, church doesn't stop. Church isn't something you attend. Church isn't a service that we go to. Church is a family we belong to. Of all generations, we are a family together, the family of God. And It's an interesting time, and you kids will have seen school's a bit weird, you're having to wash your hands all the time, and all this stuff going on, and for lots of us, uh, we're thinking, right, this is an interesting time with this coronavirus, how are we going to respond, how should we respond, and can I say from the front, it's really important that you listen to the government advice, you go to the NHS website, you find out what is real, what is true, what they're saying, and we take it seriously, not just for us, but for everyone. We care for one another and love one another in that way. But I want to say to you, this is a really lovely opportunity. It's not lovely in taking it lightly, but there's an amazing opportunity here to, one, press into your trust and faith and love of God, to worship him, to call on him, to pray to him, to trust him, to love him, as individuals and as a church, and also an amazing opportunity to be family together in this moment, to be church family. Just like Ruby and Les used to give me that comic, I felt part of family. And for those folks at home, I want to say you're part of the family here. The family carries on, and it's an amazing opportunity for us to do stuff to look after one another. Some folks are going to have to self-isolate or choose to stay at home. It's an opportunity to be able to help them out, maybe drop something carefully at their door, whatever it might be, do shopping, or at the very least, to phone, to pray, and to speak a blessing over them. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to show the world what it is to know the Prince of Peace, what it is to have Jesus in our lives, what it is to love one another as he has loved us, which is what he calls us to do. Galatians 6 says this, Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap, and if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, this is an opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are in the household of faith, especially to those in the family of God. So this is an opportunity for you to be thinking, right, how can I do the right things for for, for me? But how can I look after and love maybe my neighbours, maybe those in my life group? How can we look after folks that already are saying, do you know what, Matt, we can't come this morning and it's understandable. How can we can we ring them up? Can we pray a prayer for them? Can we bless them over the phone? I want to teach you. Actually, it's not going to be a teach. Lots of you are going to go, oh, you pulled that one out of the vault. When I was little at church, we sang this song whenever it was someone's birthday. And the highlight of the month was all age services, because if it was your birthday, you got to go up and get a rose chocolate, right? This was a big deal when you were a kid. Um, But we always sang this blessing over one another. And it's an old song, um, which some of you will know, but I want us to try and sing it together as a blessing, not just for you, 
but for everyone gathered here, for those who are tuning in as well, and just to remind ourselves that one of the things we can do is be a support, a love, and a blessing to one another because we're part of the family of God. So if you stand up, I'm going to try and teach this to you a cappella. Are we up for this? That was a, that was a frighteningly quiet yes. <laughs> Are we up for this? <laughs> Wee, we'll give it a go. Okay, so it's, for some of you, it goes, may God's blessing surround you each day. So for that, we're going to point up and go, may God's blessing surround you each day. I want to let you know, this is the song we sing over our kids to help them go to sleep. Little Harry knows this one. You know this one, don't you, Harry? Yeah, he's nodding with his little shark jumper on. Yes, I do. Uh, may God's blessing surround you each day. As you trust him, okay, and walk in his way, we point to our legs, um, may his presence within, we're going to use what we used last week, oh, I tell you what, here you go, folks at home, may God's presence within guard and keep you from sin, and we're going to clean that, go in peace, go in joy, go in love, okay? So, um, this is where I asked my wife to help me pitch this, um, and join in, we'll sing it a few times, and as we sing it, Sing it to one another. We're singing it down the camera, and we're, we're just going to bless each other with this blessing. So, may God's blessing surround you each day as you trust him and walk in his way. May God's presence within God and keep you from sin. Go in peace, go in joy, go in love. We're going to sing that again. We're going a little bit faster. And I want you, as you're singing it now, to turn it into a prayer for one another. Let's just bless one another with this lovely word. So, may God's blessing surround you each day. As you trust him and walk in his way. May God's presence within God and keep you from sin. Go in peace, go in joy, go in love. All right, we're going to sing it one more time. May God's blessing surround you each day. As you trust him and walk in his way, may God's presence within God and keep you from sin. Go in peace, go in joy, go in love. Amen. Let's pray together, shall we? Lord, I want to thank you for what is just an old and simple song that many of us know. I want to thank you for the fact that we can bless one another, we can be family together, we can hear your words that say, love one another just as I've loved you. And Lord, we want to say thank you for the family of church. Thank you for the folks that are at home today. We pray your blessing would be with them and surround them. Thank you for the folks that are here this morning. We pray your blessing would surround us too. And we just want to thank you for the great, great love you have for us and for the support and love and precious thing it is to be a part of this family of God. For we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless you guys. Take a seat. Uh, the young people and youth are going to leave us now. Sneak on down. Those that are old enough to read Just 17 will be going out with me. <laughs> not you, Rachel, not you. Um, nor me, nor me. God bless you this morning, guys. We pray you are encouraged. You have a good morning. Thank you, leaders. All right, so a few notices. I'll do the notices now whilst they are leaving. Um, most of this will be covered in emails. But um, firstly, a notice to, to remember and to be aware of, amidst all the other things that are going on, we have our Easter love gift this year, and it's going to the leprosy mission, okay? And um, I want you to think about this. We, we were going to announce it next week. I thought I'd at least give you a week in advance to think about this. 
Every uh, year at different times, as you know, we give above and beyond our regular giving. And this year, our Easter uh, love gift, uh, which is giving above and beyond, as we are able, as we feel led and is appropriate, um, is to the Leprosy Mission, a most extraordinary charity that are still helping folks um, with this uh, extremely uh, debilitating and difficult uh, disease. So we, um, we want to just bless this uh, work. And so as of next week, it'll be in the email this week coming up. As of next week, um, we'll announce it again, but the uh, envelopes are available, some of the envelopes on the offertory box as you leave this morning. So that's the love gift. Uh, there are a few cancellations. Um, it's been quite a week, hasn't it, of things moving quickly. Um, so the Open Doors event, which we were hosting on Wednesday here, that has been cancelled by the organisers. Sorry for folks that were looking forward to that. Me too. Um, the Men's Meal, 28th of March, we're postponing that for now. And sadly, Audrey's Thanksgiving service as well on the 6th of April. Um, uh, the family and I came to the decision rightly together that, yep, um, we uh, will postpone that for now. We will, of course, uh, look at when we can do that in the future. I'll keep you up to date. There will be other bits and pieces. Check the church email. If you're not on the church email, now's a good time to get on it so that you can hear all that's going on. Um, there are other things under review. So you know when it comes to um, the coronavirus stuff, you'll have seen my email um, and all of it's in there. We're working on a pastoral response, how we can look after those that are going to have to stay at home for a season. We're going to work out how we might volunteer together to care and look after those folks. Um, so that's in hand. The leadership team meet tomorrow night to discuss and plan that too. And can I just say at this point, if you do decide that you need to uh, stay at home for whatever reason, then if you could let us know in the office... That would be really helpful so that we can keep a list of who is where and how things are going on so we can make sure that your life groups um, are supporting um, and or uh, me and the pastoral team as well uh, in whatever way we can. That would be fab. And that's it for the notices and warning. Have I missed anything? Anyone got any more notices? No, that's fine. Let's continue to worship God together. Let's stand if we're able. We're going to sing about the goodness of our God.
together, let's invite um, those who are going to pray just to come up and lead us in prayers now. Thank you, Jenny and Di. The word that's been coming to me this morning, time and time again, is wisdom. And I want to pray along those lines. I want to use those letters as little prompts to remind us to pray together. So let us pray. Wisdom. W. Father, we just thank you that you've given us a measure of wisdom, maybe not as much as we need, but we just know that you are there for us and with us at all times. And now we ask for wisdom, particularly for our leaders in this church, for Matt and family, for Mig and family, for the leadership team and their families and all others who have responsibilities in this church. Father, you know each one. You know their capabilities. You know their love for you. Just give each one wisdom. May we all continue to uphold them in prayer. I, intercession. Father, there are members of our family, lovely members who are in need of our prayers, particularly today. We think of Alison and Sally and May and Gwen and Rosie and others who are isolated from us at the moment. Just be with them, Lord. Be everything that they need. We think particularly, too, of Betty Turton and Judy Scott and her family and Jen and her family. Lord, just be with them at this really difficult time. And while we're thinking of Scots, we think of Joan and Bob Scott too. And there are many others who are out of sight, but not out of our mind. Let's continue to uphold them in prayer. S is for social gatherings. Lord, we ask for wisdom for our future church gatherings, for the things that are planned, that have had to be cancelled for the things that are planned that are not. We think of weddings. We think of other meetings on our premises. Lord, just give us wisdom as to what we should do about them, what we should cancel and what should carry on. Only you know, Lord, what is coming. We don't, so we just ask for your wisdom for that. For D is dependence. Father, we all have dependence. We all have relatives. We all have no children, friends, family. All of us have to make decisions at this time, to visit or not to visit, to go or not to go. Lord, we ask your wisdom on our dependence. And we think of others for O, and ourselves, two O's. We think of our government. Lord, we just ask for wisdom for them too as they attempt to lead us. May we listen and be aware of what they're saying. We ask for our church leaders, not, not this for church only, but for the Christian leaders in this country. Just give them wisdom, <coughs> Father. And we ask for ourselves, for our friends, and for our families, for those who've got friends and families living abroad, what they should do, whether they should stay or go home, come home or whatever, Lord, just be in with their future plans and guide us and give us wisdom. And finally, M, maintain. Lord, can we continue to pray for these, our loved ones, for <coughs> the ability to do the right and helpful and correct things. Lord, we just thank you that you can take away any spirit of fear. Let us be a light to others 
who do not have this privilege. Lord, we just thank you that you are with us at all times, in all places. Just give us the knowledge and the love that you are surrounding not only us, but all those that we love and care for. Lord, just take away that, wis that <coughs> fear and anxiety and give us wisdom, your wisdom, in all that we do. Amen. Amen. So, I just think it would be good. We've got some folks here um, who are making decisions locally for considerable numbers of people. So, we've got Mike, you're a head teacher, aren't you? So, at the moment, I'm guessing, by the bleary eyes, it's a fairly important and, and, and big pressured time. We've got Sue Waitman, haven't we? Sue? Yes. And now, your food bank, so you're making decisions. We've got anyone else here who's making decisions based on a, a, a business, employees, may, the, you're in, in that spot where you're the one who's having to make those calls, or any other charities or schools here where you're making decisions that impact. Jasmine, with parents and toddlers and things going on here, yes, thank you, yes, Jen, what, yeah, so you are head or deputy, so you are part of the team, thank you, Jem. so let's put that down Anyone else? Let's just, we're going to pray specifically because we can, because we're family. Yes, hi, morning. Sagan Hill House, yes. Forgive me for putting me on the spot. Can you remind me your name? I'm sorry. Dan. Dan, thank you. Dan, bless you. We're going to pray for you too, Dan. Um, Hill House. All right. I think that's a good thing to do, don't you? Just to pray blessing on these folks. Anyone else? Yes. Joe Hughes. Yeah. Um, specifically folks that are here this morning. Um, all right, let's, yes. Yes, that's going to, we covered that. We're just covering the leadership team here. We, yeah, including Mig and I, lots of decisions on those. Mr. Huff, anything that you fall into that bracket? Not really. I'm part of the health care system, but I've been All right, we'll put you down anyway, because we like you. Um, <laughs> Let's just pray specifically for these folks, given what Di has been pressing into in prayer. Let's pray together. And if you're one of those people uh, named now, just put your hands out just as an act um, of receiving now from God. So if you are one of these people, we've got Ewan and Joe We've got Sue, Mike, Jem, Jasmine, Dan. We bless you now as your brothers and sisters gathered here and those who are online as well. We bless you in the name of Jesus. May you know his peace. May you know his deep, wonderful uh, love for you. May you have the wisdom of God, heavenly wisdom. May your decisions be the right ones. May you listen well to the folks around you and may you be courageous when you need to. Most of all, may you have the favour of God on you in this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We bless you guys in those decisions. And for those who aren't here, Lord, we want to think of uh, street pastors. Dave Knight is involved in heading that up. And any other specific people connected to our community here who are having to make decisions. Father, we bless them now in your name. Give them your favor and your wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's carry on in prayer. Thanks, Jim. Have we got the people that we'd norm we haven't? That I was going to say that was what I'm praying for. <laughs> right. Father, thank you for the family of God in this place. And we lift you this morning, Andrew and Helen, who've come to join us fairly recently, but we thank you for them and the gifting that they bring among us, Lord, and for the wisdom. We pray a special blessing on them today in whatever they're doing. And we pray for, you, for Jane and Matt and Abigail, who we know well. And Lord, we pray for them in their family life, in all that they're involved in. We thank you for Jane's gifting in the church family and 
how much she does on our behalf. We think of Matt and his health issues and pray protection over him at this time. And we lift Brian and Sue to you, Lord, especially at this time we remember Sue with huge decisions to make with the food bank. But Lord, they're not just what they do, they are lovely people of God and we pray for them in their home life and in the things they do when they're not considering work. Pray for Brian with the postal service and things that again you'd keep protect him and keep him safe as he has to deliver things to doors and so forth. And we lift him and Sylvia to you, and again we thank you for the many years that they've served and loved in this place. Lord, bless them today. Bless them with their busy life with their family. Keep them safe, Lord. We ask a special protection of the blood of Jesus round these folk this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to just briefly share a thought that the Lord brought to me this morning, just before I disappear again. And I was, they, they, on the news this morning, it said that those of us who are over 70 may have to self-isolate, not just for a few days, but for weeks or months. And I thought, ah, I live on my own. The implications of that are absolutely horrendous in many ways and then I was having my quiet time and I took it to the Lord and I said Lord that upsets me rather because I know I can trust in you but there are those around who are going to struggle even more than I do with that um, I was reading I was just going through the Celtic morning prayer and in it it says one thing I have asked of the Lord and this is what I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and the Lord said if you have to self-isolate you don't just go into your house you go into mine and in my house there is perfect peace there is comfort there is support there is love surrounding you and then I went to Psalm 91 and just the first verse and actually I brought it out but I can quote it from the Amplified he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. Father, may we know that as we go from this place today. In Jesus' name, amen. Jenny, I don't know if you saw the order of service, but just so happens Psalm 91 is the psalm today. Um, that's good, isn't it? Julia, thank you. So Psalm 91, I'm reading from the NIV. Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honour him. 
With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Reverend Peter Morgan coming on up this morning to share God's word with us. Thank you, Peter, and God bless you as you share. Morning, everybody. Um, seeing the camera there reminds me when I was at uh, Bible College and we used to have to do preaching practice in the chapel and at one stage they would film us uh, preaching a sermon and then afterwards we'd go and have um, the critical analysis and um, I remember going home that day I travelled each day to college and uh, telling Catherine what had been said about me uh, to see if she thought it was fair comment. And um, so in, in this analysis, um, nothing was said um, terrible about the content or the actual preaching, but what they did say was, I had excessive body language. Now, <laughs> no, language, not odour, language, okay? And um, so uh, over the years, uh, I've obviously tempered quite a bit. Uh, I used to do a lot of wandering up and down stages, uh, and I don't do that anymore with the ageing process. And uh, so we should be okay. So I've cut down all the that kind of thing, and, and, um, and much to people's annoyance, and, and uh, I'll try and keep it sort of, okay. That's that, right. I've also got a bag with me, uh, and that's a surprise for later, if you behave. Right. When you put on the, the, the rotor for preaching, and um, quite a way ahead, you're often given a passage of scripture that would you please preach on. Sometimes they just say, yeah, Preach as the Lord's, Lord leads you, and, and which is like the worst thing you can kind of be given <laughs> because you're thinking, is it, is it me or is it really? And so it's much nicer when they give you something that's in a theme. Little did I know all those months ago that Psalm 91 would be so relevant as of today. I must admit I got a bit panicky when Jenny started sharing. I thought my sermon is just now disappearing, uh, you know, and I'll think of something else to say. Um, but I think we're okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, bless you, sister. Okay. Uh, right. <laughs> it is quite an amazing psalm. And... Um, we, I got to, yes, hang on. I'm amazed they allow me to use this because Kathleen would tell you that me and equipment and things are a disaster. So, but I think we're okay. So the title given was Psalm 91, Resting in His Shadow. This psalm, although it'll say anonymous, if you look in... Uh, the Bible headings and things, um, it is considered possibly based on uh, a very ancient uh, prayer, a psalm-type prayer of Moses. There, there are other mosaic ones around that part of the collection of psalms. And if you look at the content, you can understand why there's a thinking about it being uh, of the mosaic period in terms of problems, troubles, battles, plagues, all sorts of things um, that were going on. So I'm going to split it up in, into uh, sections and, and hopefully we'll unpack it that way. So now this... Hey, that's good. 
I'm so thrilled, you don't know how. Right. Is a, was that the body, too much body language? Sorry, sorry, I apologize. Right, okay. The wonderful thing about this psalm is that right from the beginning, in those opening uh, two, two verses, the, the psalmist declares his own faith before applying it to us. The eloquent opening is enriched by the four divine names. First of all, Most High. God, Most High cuts away every threat down to size. The most high. Secondly, the title, the word for God, Almighty. Shaddai. El Shaddai. The name which sustained the homeless patriarchs as they journeyed and as they travelled and as they faced difficulties of many sorts, they knew to them God was most high and almighty, powerful, the one and only El Shaddai. This was the name that Abraham and Isaac and Jacob knew about God. You read in Exodus, particularly chapter 6, verse 3. Then we come to the Lord, which is how it's translated, Yahweh. And you know there that this was the name given to Moses in Exodus 3, when he said to God, how will people know who I'm talking about? Uh, What kind of name can I give that will... Uh, make the notes, not just me making up all these things, but you are the one true God. And the name he was given was Yahweh, which is, I am, and I always will be. And that's an amazing name, isn't it, of God. I am. It sounds very cryptic, but it simply is, I am. Not only that, but it's an always will be, not just for now, but for today and forever. And then we come to the general name, which is then made personal, my God. And that's where you get the L, E-L from, an El Shaddai, my God, almighty, the most high who is Yahweh. So we have all that introduction in two verses. The main thrust then of this psalm is about, after my refuge, your refuge. And the first... Yep, okay. Verses three to six are about the versatile protection that God gives. For he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. Now, we do (laughs) have to be careful in this psalm that you could read very literally and wonder why things are happening the way they are. You have to remember that the psalms are a genre of song, of poetry, of verse, and you have to read in that sense. And I hope I will, in it, show you that the protection is there, but it's in a very powerful spiritual realm. So we'll see how that goes as we go along. Okay. And then verse 4 is one of my favourites. I have to say this. He will cover you With his feathers, he will shelter you with his wings. I chose that song, Living Under the Shadow of Your Wing. It's just uh, incredible. I I find so... I'm doing the body thing. It's just such a wonderful concept. uh, And um, 
eagles. I just love to see eagles. And in various times traveling around different parts of the world, I come across eagles and I just am fascinated by them. And they're so powerful. And there's wings just spread out. Now, I didn't have an eagle to bring with me this morning, but when I used to um, do children's talks and, and all those services, I used to use a lot of hand puppets. I had quite a collection because uh, people used to buy them for me for birthday and Christmas. I had an overwhelming number of hand puppets. When I finished full-time ministry in, in Portsmouth, um, I gave most of them away to children's nurseries. I shouldn't have done that. I really miss them. I, I do. And I, in my mind, you go, oh, I've got a puppet that does that, you know. And I think, no, I gave it away. However, I have got one. So this is the kind of the children's visual part of the sermon for adults. Okay? Yeah. And... I was always known for taking very classy bags to church with my puppets in. Uh, Ian might remember this. Um, the Pudding Club. That is nothing to do with what I'm talking about this morning or what's inside. But it just shows the kind of thing that I end up with. Anyway. Um, so I think... Yeah, actually, the other thing was, Catherine will say... Never work with animals, children, or Peter. <laughs> I tend to go off script at times. Catherine, I need your help this morning, love. C could you come forward, please? She has no idea I was going to do this. So. I don't know how much you can see this. Whoops. Oh, hold those. I just supposed to see those. Right. Okay. I haven't got an eagle, but we do have an owl. Oh, so long since I've done this. Oh, there we go. Okay. Right. Now, if you just talk much yourself, if you put those back in. I do magic as well sometimes, you know. That's, a, that's another disaster, don't worry. Okay. Right, okay. Don't, no, no, just stay back. That's right. So this is, this, I, if you can see this, okay, it, it's a lovely owl, and it's all fluffy. I can't remember now where it came from, actually, but, um, but the, and the lovely thing about it, though, is as well as being uh, wisdom, that, that was said, wasn't it? Wisdom. Yeah, don't, yeah, see? Wisdom. Psalm 91. Thank you, two ladies. Right, okay. Here we go. And um, the thing is with this, as, as you unfold the wings of this wonderful uh, bird, not quite as big and powerful as the eagle, but pretty powerful, um, we're going to find out something. So, Catherine, this is where we do need now to carefully undo the wings, and uh, you'll find us two... Little finger puppets, which you, you could display. I thought I'd use Kathy because then, it, it, you know, any disease we can spread between us. Okay, there you go. All right? So, so there you go. So, look at that. See? Two, two very um, vulnerable young, what are they called? Owlets? <laughs> Owlet. Pardon? <laughs> Owl nest. He said squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> Becky, get a grip of this husband of yours, right? So, yeah, and so it's lovely to me because then, okay, so this is where they're now cared for. When they do a little flitting around in the nest, they then go back and they go back in. Whoops. Come on, assistant. And see it, the wonders of Velcro, uh, back in protection. So that is the visual. Okay, thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Well done. Yeah, go away now. Yeah, thank you. I just love that. Seriously, though, he will cover you with his feathers, he will shout you with his wings, his faithful promises are your armor and protection. And this is what we need to hold on. 
to at this time in particular. Always useful any time to hold on to these truths, but at this time, such powerful words. It's protection, but it's comfort. It's a little like our moment, isn't it? You see little owls under the wings being kept warm and protected. It's a lovely, cuddly moment, but it's a powerful moment. It's an almighty moment. It's a God moment. Most dangers are of a kind which strike unseen, against which the strong are as helpless as the weak. Talks about snares and traps, things that often are not seen until you're caught in them. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. There are ills that attack the mind, and there are ills that attack the body, and those that attack both. And this is a vulnerability at this moment in time of the unseen. It's where the body can become ill, prayerfully just for a while, but also what goes on in the mind. Anxiety, concern, worry. People have loved ones, elder relatives, bothered about going to visit. Are they okay? Are they being looked after? As rightly we prayed about those in caring professions, that they keep well. And all that is part of what we're into at the moment. So how much more important it is that remember our God Almighty and Protector. There is a problem. And let's go on to this. There is what we call individual protection, verses 7 to 10. It turns the fact of you, and you is emphatic in these verses. Though a thousand fought your side, though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. Now what we have to be careful here, that this that these verses are not seen as some kind of um, charm offensive against all ills. It's about the spiritual powerfulness of our God. It is spiritual warfare, which people often shy away from in terms that it does sound so beyond us, but it's goes on all the time. It is subtle and also often very open. It's good to pray for help. It's good to pray that we know the sense that the angels that are part of these um, spiritual warfare that's going on. In... um, Yeah, Luke twenty two forty three. It's in the Garden of Gethsemane. It's about Jesus. It says, an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. But in Matthew 26, 53, it says, Jesus, don't you realize that I could ask my father for thousands of angels to protect us, and he would send them instantly. But if I did, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that describe what must happen now? As it's right, it says in the word, God's ways are not our ways. We often think we would know how we would put things right, but we have to, this is faith, trust in God. And God, know, God knows definitely, certainly, what he's about.
Romans 8.35. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity, or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ our Lord, who loved us. As God puts those wings over us and protects us. And although we could read that these things won't touch us, no evil will conquer you, no plague will come near your home. This was in terms of ultimate protection because God is almighty. Jesus is God almighty. Therefore, we are on the victorious side. So these things will not take away from us our salvation will not take away from us God's protection. Verse 13, you will trample upon lions and cobras. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. I have actually seen films which has amazed me of churches in some countries, I have to say also particularly in America, where as part of their worship, they grasp hold of dangerous and poisonous snakes and wave them around as they sing their songs to prove these verses. There are those who've gone to fight lions physically to prove these verses literally and have died. They've been struck by the snake and poisoned. They've been obviously been killed by a lion. This is the genre of a psalm. It means that despite all these things that are around us, we are safe in God's hands. It doesn't say we won't avoid them. It doesn't say these things will not come upon us. What well, it says like in verse 15 or 14, the Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honour them. I will be with them in trouble. I will be with you when a plague does come around. I will be with you when dangerous things are upon you. I will be with you. And we know at times there is the miraculous, that there and then there is protection. If any of you have been to the... Uh, passion play in Obramagau, Germany. It happens every 10 years. It will be happening in this particular 10th year, 2020. Because the village celebrates by sharing the gospel in an amazing way. If you've not been there, it is quite amazing to go there and experience that passion play. Because the village was delivered from the plague that went on in all the towns around them. but they were just one of the few towns. But God chose to do that. And that's the God that God is. That's why we often wonder about why some are healed and some aren't, etc. That's God of our faith. That's the God who promises salvation, who promises eternal life. Life goes on apart from this brief time that we're here on earth. And that's the important thing, surely, isn't it? is salvation and life in all its fullness that comes through all these things that can be around like today. And we go through them as Christians. We may well get caught up in it. Some will suffer and some, sadly, may leave, lose their earthly life. But if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are his. And you can have confidence in that. We're not trying to prove what God doesn't want us to prove. What he wants us is to show trust in him. To show what faith really is. Trust in the unknown 
and known. The known is salvation and eternal life. The unknown is what we'll go through in getting there. So, as God's servants, we are not merely survivors, but as victors who trample deadly enemies underfoot. This is the spiritual warfare that we are involved in. And where the angels are around us, to give us strength. It is strength for service and sacrifice. I want to uh, just read the closing verses of this psalm, and then I want to read the closing verses from last week's psalm as well that Matt preached on. So... Verses 14 to 16, under the heading of God's pledge. So it's my refuge, says the psalmist, your refuge, as he shares that song with you, and this is God's pledge. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honour them. I will reward them with a long life an eternal life, and give them my salvation. And from last week, Psalm 73, verse 28. But as for me, how good it is to be near God. Are you near God this morning? I have made the sovereign Lord my shelter, and I will tell everyone about the wonderful things you do. And I will tell everyone about the wonderful things you do. That's last week's word. This is this week's word. And if God's given the same word over many weeks, he says, listen. Listen. Do you know God this morning? Almighty. Yahweh. My saviour if you're sitting there and you're not certain this is God's word that was spoken so long ago and if this is not scripture relevant to today's life then I don't know what is we have a wonderful almighty God who is with us walking with us this very day in this country and in many countries, lifting up the Christians who need to tell others why they feel secure, spiritually, wholeness around them through God who is almighty. We stand and pray. God, you are almighty. You are powerful. You are our saviour, our protector, living under the shadow of your wings. Lord, be with us all at this difficult time. Be with those around this world of yours who know you, And Lord, help those who know you to tell others who don't know you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, just pour your spirit down afresh upon us right now. Bring your assurance. Bring your peace. Let us know the abundance of your grace.
Amen. Stay standing, folks, for a second. Can I invite the band up, please? I want to ask you a question. Have you got God in right perspective right now for you? Just picking up on what Peter has shared in this psalm. Is he your almighty? Is he the most high for you? For many folks, a time like this, for all of us, it comes as a surprise, a bit of a shock, what's going on. But for many folks, all that they took to be foundation gets swept away. Well, I've kind of always done all right so far. I, I, I'm healthy on this. Well, suddenly, things change, and folks will be realizing, what is life all about? Where am I at? I want to say to you that our God is bigger than this situation. Our God is bigger than your worries. He's bigger than that fear that might be inside. He is the Almighty. He is Yahweh. He is El Shaddai. God Almighty. And we're just going to sing a very simple refrain now. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. And what we're doing is we can't make God any higher or any bigger or any more glorious or any more powerful or any more loving or kind than he already is. He is those things. And he always will be. I am and I always will be, says God. But in our hearts, we can let fears and concerns become bigger than God to us. And it's time just to get them the right way round doesn't mean we dismiss what's going on. No, we take it seriously. But ultimately, God is bigger. He is good. He is kind. He is love. He is with us. And we dwell under the shadow of his wings. Under the shelter of his wings. So let's just take a moment. And folks at home can do this too. Perhaps you want to put your hands out or some other way of just saying, Lord, and if you want to bring your concerns, your worries, your fears, just bring them now to the Lord as we sing. Let him take those as you raise him up, as you lift him up in your hearts and we exalt him. Let's sing together. Start with I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh Lord. I exalt.
family and your friends to the Lord. I just want you to name them before him. I want you to think about your neighbors. Bring them before him, the most high. And just lift them to the Lord. I want us to think about our nation and just bring him bring them all of us really our government and our entire nation before the Lord. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of Yahweh, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Yahweh, the God in whom I trust. And Lord, we lift up our family and our friends and we place them under the care of your wings. We bring our own fears and anxieties, folks at home and folks here. And we exalt you higher. And we hand them to you and we exalt your name and your goodness. We bring our nation to you. And we humble ourselves before you, Lord. And we ask for your intervention and your healing and your care. We ask for your support for all those who are preparing plans for medical responses, those on the front line. Cover them, Lord, under the shadow of your protection, the shelter of your wings. And we lift our world, Lord. We are so arrogant so often before you. We think we know best. We think that we're mini-gods and something so tiny can remind us that we really are not. And so we look to you, Lord. We look to you and we honor you. And we turn our hearts to you and we trust you and we thank you above all else that you're the God who stepped down into our mess and brokenness to rescue us, to save us in Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. You are our Lord and our King, and we trust you right now for our families, for our nation, for our community, and for ourselves. Let's just sing one more time, I exalt thee. I exalt thee.
our men and our men. Friends, we have come to the end of our time this morning. Um, we are meeting tonight for freedom. We will keep you up to date as things change. Um, but just keep pressing into God. Keep loving him. Keep trusting him. Keep loving one another. Take opportunities where you can to be good neighbors. I've heard of someone who's just dropped their number or going to drop their number in the houses on the street just to say if we can help in any way. Um, for some folks, that's going to be possible. For others, it's not. Um, but let's be church family together, all of us, whether we're here or not. Let's love one another well. Let's look after each other. Let's pray together. I'll keep you up to date. At the moment, we will be meeting next week. But who knows with the way things are going? What we do know is God is good. He is our Lord. He is our King. And he is sovereign over all. Let me um, speak these words of Scripture over us all. And I'll pray a prayer of blessing. So receive this now. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you, your friends, your family, and be with all of us now, the coming weeks, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. It's lovely to see you. There are um, refreshments served. They are served for you today. There's no self-service uh, thank you, Irene and Richard, and God bless you folks at home who've been tuning in as well.